Let's say you get a call one morning. There's a crack in the side of the community pool. Water is leaking, and now you're really in the deep end. Not to worry, because your HOA reserve fund just leapt into action. A healthy reserve fund is an essential component of a well-run HOA or community association. Giving residents peace of mind that larger maintenance projects and emergency repairs are covered. So how do you set up and keep track of an HOA reserve fund? In this video, we'll explore all the ins and outs of HOA reserve funds and reserve fund accounting practices for community association managers. Let's start with some basics. What exactly is a reserve fund? Think of it like a rainy day savings account where an HOA keeps a predetermined amount of money to cover the cost of non-routine repairs. Reserve funds are managed by a board of directors for the HOA as part of their duty to keep properties up to the expectations and contractual agreements in place with its residents. What can it be used for? Any repair or upgrade that isn't done regularly. The repairs can be expected, like reshingling an older roof, or a surprise, like a sudden crack in the community pool. The HOA can dip into the reserve fund to repair the roof or fix the crack. What's important is that HOAs keep enough money in the reserve fund and use it for nothing but non-routine repairs. HOAs also maintain an operating fund which is used to pay for day-to-day -day expenses. When a resident pays their monthly HOA fee, a portion of it goes to the operating fund, while another portion goes to the reserve fund. Operating and reserve funds are kept in two separate accounts. When it comes to the amount of money in an HOA reserve fund, there's no magic number. It all depends on how many properties, amenities, and other assets an HOA manages. Whatever that number is, a reserve fund should ideally be between 70 and 100% funded. That means that there's enough money in the account to cover all or almost all of the upcoming replacements and repairs. When there isn't enough money in a reserve fund, an HOA has to conduct a special assessment. An HOA's governing board will assess the cost of a needed repair or replacement and then divide that cost up among residents. Some HOAs require all residents to pay an equal share, while others base the portion a resident pays on the square footage of their unit. Collecting money for reserve funds should be built into the fee structure for residents of the HOA. In other words, the monthly fee that's charged to residents should include enough money for regular maintenance and services, as well as some money to set aside for the reserve fund. To determine how much money they need for reserve funds and what to build into the fees, HOAs must conduct a reserve fund study. If an HOA is creating a reserve fund for the first time, or if they're reassessing an existing one, they conduct a reserve fund study to determine how much money they should put away. To conduct a reserve fund study, an HOA can hire an outside firm to come in and inspect the property to determine what's going to need fixing and upgrading in the near and even distant future. They will then determine how much money the HOA will need to make those repairs. HOAs take the findings of the study to create a financial plan for their reserve fund, including how much they should put away, how it should be invested, and how much to charge residents to fund the reserve. A reserve fund study should be done every few years to make sure there's enough money to put away for a rainy day. As we mentioned before, HOA reserve funds are held in a separate account from operating and other funds. This is called fund balance accounting, and nothing puts the fun in fund like accounting. It allows an HOA to manage and allocate funds for specific uses and keep clear records of where every dollar goes. Fund balance accounting for HOA reserves is very important for two reasons. First, if reserve money is not in a separate account, the IRS can look at it as taxable income to the HOA. Second, it's absolutely essential to keep track of what comes in and goes out of the HOA. Residents wanna know where their money is, and should the HOA be audited, the treasurer will have to account for every dollar the HOA has earned and spent. There are three accounting methods used by HOAs, each with their pros and cons. In a cash accounting situation, income and expenses are only recorded when the money actually shows up in or has left the bank account. This is a pretty straightforward way to keep records, but it doesn't account for pending funds from uncashed checks or late resident fees, for example. Particularly with expenses, you should account for pending transactions so that you don't overspend. Accrual accounting does account for pending income and expenses. In each situation, a third column called the cash column is added to the balance sheet. HOAs record money due in the first column and money owed in the second column. When the money actually lands in the HOA's bank account or is paid by the HOA, the entry shifts to the cash column to reflect the true account balance. This method gives an HOA a more complete picture of their finances and makes for a thrilling conversation at dinner parties. The third method takes a little bit from both cash and accrual accounting. For money earned, an HOA would use the accrual method. 
recording money when it is due to the association and shifting it to the cash column when the cash is received. When money is owed by the HOA, expenses are only recorded when the money is actually paid, like the cash accounting method. Whatever an HOA chooses, the goal should be to keep clear, accurate accounting records of every transaction. Of course, there are software services that can help HOAs keep the books and ensure all income and expenses are accounted for. Check the links in the description for Billium's tools. Can reserve fund money be invested? The short answer is yes. An HOA can invest at least some of the money for a reserve fund, as long as there's enough money available for immediate needs. Let's say an HOA's reserve fund study comes back with two recommendations. The first is to repaint the exterior in the next five years. The second is to replace the furnace in the next 10 years. You won't need that money right away, so you can invest it. When an HOA creates, modifies, or spends money from a reserve fund, they must follow their state's regulations for those funds. Every state has different regulations for reserve funds and reserve studies. For example, California has very specific rules for reserve funds to combat fund abuse. An HOA must complete a reserve fund study every three years, have a plan in place for repairs and replacements, and report every year whether or not the reserve fund can meet the HOA's needs for the next 30 years. Before an HOA does anything with a reserve fund, they should look up the regulations for their state. Every business, family, and individual should have a rainy day fund to take care of larger projects and unforeseen fixes. Same is true for HOAs. An HOA following your guidance should set up a healthy reserve fund and put into place tried and true reserve fund accounting practices to keep both residents and their properties in the black. To learn more, or to learn how Buildium can help you take control of your accounting, check out the links in the description. And don't forget to subscribe to get more HOA management tips. Until next time.